Summary of the Return of the Soldier by Rebecca West It is March 1916, and the First World War is going on. Chris Baldry is fighting on the Western Front and hasn't talked to his wife Kitty in two weeks. She's trying not to worry. Jenny, Chris's cousin, lives with Kitty at Baldry Court and has been Chris's true love her whole life. She is also worried. She tries to find comfort in the lovely home and grounds they've worked hard to take care of for Chris because she thinks that these rich surroundings make him happy and content. Chris's life was already hard before the war. He took over his father's failed business and a job he didn't want, and five years ago, their baby son Oliver died. Mrs. William Gray from nearby Wealdstone comes to visit Baldry Court. She doesn't know anyone from the suburbs and has never heard of her, but Kitty thinks the woman is looking for help. In the hall, Kitty and Jenny see a clearly lower-class woman who is badly dressed and hard at work. Margaret Gray, who is Mrs. Gray, says she heard that Chris has been hit by a shell on the front. Kitty doesn't believe Margaret, asks her a lot of questions, and then tells her she's a fake, which makes Jenny feel bad. She gives them a message from Chris that was sent to her old house and then tears up and leaves. Jenny is told by Kitty that Chris is lost to them no matter what, whether he's really gone crazy or has been quietly in love with this disgusting woman. Jenny gets a letter in the morning from her cousin Frank Baldry. He got a telegram from Chris and went to see him in the Red Cross Hospital in France. Frank found Chris in a strange mood. He was acting boyishly and saying he loved a girl named Margaret Allington. It was still 1901 when Frank asked Chris what Kitty thought of all this. Chris had no idea who Kitty was. Chris passed out when he realized it was really 1916. Frank tells Jenny to get Kitty ready for how weird it will be when Chris comes home. Chris goes back to Baldry Court a week later. He doesn't recognize Kitty right away, and Jenny's age and the fact that the house has been changed make him feel uneasy. Instead of making Chris remember their wedding day, Kitty wears a white dress to dinner. Chris tells Kitty that he needs to see Margaret, and she accepts. But Jenny sees that Kitty is looking angry. Chris starts to talk to Jenny about his trips to Monkey Island 15 years ago, which are the last memories that feel real to him after Kitty storms off to bed. Chris used to walk to the Monkey Island Inn when he went to see his Uncle Ambrose. He would talk for hours with Margaret Allington, the innkeeper's shy and thoughtful daughter. The last thing he remembers is the day he found Margaret by herself on the island and they told each other they loved each other. When he saw Margaret glowing in the moonlight, he knew that neither she nor his feelings for her could ever change. Jenny gets Margaret from Wealdstone the next day. Jenny finds Margaret's simple neighborhood home and the fact that she is covered in flour and sweat from cooking to be disgusting. She talks Margaret into going to see Chris, and Margaret agrees, crying with desire. As they ride to Baldry Court, Margaret tells Chris how her relationship with him ended because of a mistake about her friendship with a boy from the neighborhood. Soon after, Margaret's father passed away. Two years later, she married Mr. Gray, a failed businessman who is sick and needs a lot of care. She recently went back to Monkey Island for the first time since she left. There, she got old letters from Chris that she had never sent on, along with the message from the front. Jenny sees the difference between how scruffy Margaret looks and how fancy the estate is at Baldry Court. She fears Margaret's reunion with Chris. But while she and Kitty watch from a window, Chris and Margaret happily hug and start talking right away, as if they had never been apart. Jenny thought Chris could never love Margaret the way she is now, but she now sees that she was wrong. Over the next few days, Margaret continues to visit. When she's there, Chris grows, but Kitty gets sad and Jenny is sad. Several doctors visit Baldry Court to try to help Chris get his mind back. After a week, Jenny goes to find Chris and Margaret to let them know that another doctor is on the way. Even though she is angry at them, she is shocked by how beautiful they are when she sees them sitting in the woods. Margaret is keeping an eye on Chris while he sleeps, and Jenny thinks that Margaret's soul gives Chris's soul a safe place to heal. Jenny thinks that Margaret has given all of them a gift in this way. Also, Chris can't be sent back to the front if he doesn't remember what he did. 
When they get back to the house, Jenny and Margaret talk upstairs while Chris goes off with Dr. Gilbert Anderson. When Jenny shows Margaret a picture of baby Oliver and Jenny tells Margaret what happened to him, Margaret says that she had a two-year-old son named Dick who died five years ago. Margaret's raw sadness makes Jenny feel scared, which is different from the peaceful scene in the woods. When the women get together with the others, they hear Dr. Anderson explain that Chris's forgetfulness is an act of his unconscious self, he's not letting himself remember the present for some reason. Dr. Anderson says this is because Chris is trying to hide a strong desire. Jenny and Kitty have no idea what Chris wants, but Margaret says that he has always been needy and wanted love, which shows that she knows him better than anyone else. She says that Chris would be brought back to the present by a terrible memory, like the death of his little boy. Jenny and Margaret visit Oliver's bedroom to look for some of the baby's old things. Margaret cries and says that being happy is the most important thing in the world and she can't stand for Chris to lose it. But when Kitty walks by crying, Margaret and Jenny agree that they need to try to heal Chris if they really love him. If Chris stays stuck in the past, he will turn into a sad and strange person, and they should keep him from getting that for his own sake. Olivia's things are taken by Margaret to Chris. Jenny falls to the ground in tears and then looks outside because Kitty told her to. Margaret has disappeared into the shadows on the grass, and Jenny is startled to see Chris staring hopelessly at the house while walking with a soldier's step instead of a boy's. He's better. Kitty says happily as she looks over Jenny's shoulder. About the author. Rebecca West was born Chichely Isabel Fairfield in 1892 in London, England. Her father left her family when Chichely was just a baby. Her mother moved the family to Edinburgh, Scotland, with her two older sisters. Chichely grew up in a home that loved books and thought deeply about things. As a young woman, she was already writing for feminist magazines under the name Rebecca West, which came from the name of the main character in Ibsen's play Rosmersholm. After West wrote an angry review of one of H.G. Wells's books, Wells was interested and asked West to his house for lunch. This started a love affair that lasted for 10 years. They had a boy together named Anthony West, but West had a hard time getting along with him. West wrote a lot of different kinds of things, like trip stories, Black Lamb and Grey Falcon, literary criticism, novels, The Return of the Soldier was her first fiction book, and articles for The New Yorker about the Nuremberg Trials. By the time she was middle-aged, West was famous and wealthy for her writing. During World War II, she took in Yugoslav war refugees and housed them on her farm in southern England. West thought of herself as on the political left, but in her works she was strongly against communism. She died on March 15, 1983. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.